1.38. Please join and sing. We begin our prayers this morning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. My brothers and sisters in Christ, welcome to the second Sunday of Advent. In a special way, God himself the Gospels invites us to continue to prepare the way for him to, to continue to be ready. As human beings, sometimes we are, sometimes we are not. So for those times that we have taken readiness for granted, for this, the times that we have not loved God and our neighbor as we should, let us with humility bow our heads and ask him to forgive us. Lord Jesus, you came to cause sinners. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the Savior of the world. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Son of God and Son of Mary. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. And let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, may no earthly undertaking hinder those who set out in haste to meet your Son, but may our learning of heavenly wisdom gain us admittance to his company, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. From the book of the prophet Isaiah. Comfort, give comfort to my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her service is at an end. Her guilt is expiated. Indeed, she has received from the hand of the Lord double for all her sins. 
a voice cries out, In the desert prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the wasteland a highway for our God. Every valley shall be filled in. Every mountain and hill shall be made low. The rugged land shall be made a plain. The rough country a broad valley. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. And all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Go up onto a high mountain, Zion, herald of glad tidings. Cry out at the top of your voice, Jerusalem, herald of good news. Fear not to cry out and say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. Here comes with power the Lord God, who rules by his strong arm. Here is his reward with him, his recompense before him. Like a shepherd, he feeds his flock. In his arms, he gathers the lambs, carrying them in his bosom and leading the ewes with care. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial is, Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. peace to his people. Near indeed is his salvation to those who fear him. Glory dwelling in our land. Kindness and truth shall meet. Justice and peace shall kiss. Truth shall spring out of the earth and justice shall look down from heaven. Lord, the Lord himself will give his benefits. Our land shall yield its increase. Justice shall walk before him and prepare the way of his steps. Lord, A reading from the second letter of St. Peter. Do not ignore the one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years like one day. The Lord does not delay his promise, as some regard delay, but he's patient with you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a mighty roar, and the elements will be dissolved by fire, and the earth and everything done on it will be found out. Since everything is to be dissolved in his, this way, what sort of persons ought you to be, conducting yourselves in holiness and devotion, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved in flames and the enemies melted by fire. But according to his promise, we wait new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you await these things, be eager to be found without spot or blemish before him at peace. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The beginning of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare your way. A voice of one crying out in the desert, Prepare the word of the Lord, make straight his paths. John the Baptist appeared in the desert, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. People of the whole Judea countryside and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem were going out to meet him, and were being baptized by him in the Jordan River as they acknowledged their sins. John was clothed in camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist. He fed on locusts and wild honey. And this is what he proclaimed. One mightier than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop and loosen the tongues of his sandals. I have baptized you with water. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. I'd like to invite Jesse to come up and light the second candle. We start the second. <laughs> Don't go too far. Don't go too far. I know you're surprised. However, I don't know if you noticed what happened, talking about being ready, being prepared. We have two Jesses in this chapel. One is the Jesse that just came up, and this one is Jesse too. As soon as he heard Jesse, he was so prepared, he came up, not knowing that this one is Jesse too, okay? So, can we start by clapping for the Jesse that was prepared? Can we do that? Second, Jesse is our tradition here. While I'm pastor, tell us a little bit about you. Tell the community about you, where you came from, anything you want us to know. It's a free country. Go ahead. The hands together for him. Thank you. If you go, I have a little picture to share with you all today. This picture is a picture of. Somebody who left a legacy. Thank you. Thank you, Martina. Thank you. Awesome. St. Nicholas. Today is 6th December. And it's the official feast day of St. Nicholas. However, in the Catholic Church, as you already know, the Sunday celebration trumps every other celebration of a saint. So I'm not focusing on St. Nicholas today, but I want to make just a brief mention of him. Why am I doing that? Because last year, this was before the pandemic and all that, it was a big deal here. 
6th of December was during the week. Last year, we had a special mass. There was an article run by PA, Public Affairs, and we had people come over to the annex with their gifts, and some volunteers wrapped all their gifts before they took it to the post office. Who is St. Nicholas? Did you know he lived in this part of the world, in this country, in a town called Demre? St. Nicholas was a bishop in this country. And as a good pastor, he noticed a family who had nothing like they were poor. And the family had some girls. Back in those days, if you don't have enough money, and the girls might start doing things that are not good. So to make sure they have money for dowry and all that, St. Nicholas will come at night and leave a small bag of money, his family inheritance. He will use part of it and leave it at the doorsteps of the man's house. That way he can use it to take care of his family. Every time they would come out of the house, I'm like, wow, somebody visited us. Who must this be? They did not know it was St. Nicholas. He did it all incognito. Did not want anybody to know. But finally, it caught up on him. They found out that he was the one helping poor people around the town. St. Nicholas went on to move to the Netherlands and died over there. He took the legacy of helping poor people, of helping people, giving people surprise gifts. You know what happened? The people that migrated from Netherlands to the New World, America, they took the, they gave him the name Santa Nicholas. They took that tradition with them to America. And Americans modernized the name and call it Santa Claus. Today, a lot of people don't know how the tradition started and what we celebrate. I just wanted to mention that today is the Feast of St. Nicholas, okay? And briefly, I'd like to talk about what we are celebrating today. Jesse, thank you for lighting the second candle of Advent. That second candle signifies faith. The first one we lit last Sunday, that one is hope. Today is faith. And if you look at Advent, I feel sorry for the so season of Advent. I don't know about you. Lent is more solemn. Lent is six weeks. People kind of get into that. But Advent is so brief before we know it is Christmas. We have two more candles to light. Be sure you are here for those candles. And be sure you are ready too, because you can be called upon right before Mass to be the one to light a candle, okay? Today, the scripture, the scripture passages that we read today reminded us. Isaiah chapter 40. Make straight in the wasteland a highway for our God. Technically saying, be prepared, be ready. In today's second reading, from the second letter of Peter, it says, God doesn't wish that anyone should perish, but that all should come to repentance. It says, the day of the Lord will, will come like a thief. If we know a thief is going to come, to take our property, what do we do? We get ready. We lock things up. We lock the doors, right? But he said he's going to sneak in on us like a thief. Be ready. Be eager to be found without blemish. Whoa. Or spot before God. Be at peace. How do we achieve this peace? How do we get ready? Advent means to await 
to expect. Like we talked about last Sunday. What are we expecting? What are we awaiting? Two things. One is that we are awaiting the birth, celebration of the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ at Christmas. That's what we are, that's what we are leading up to, the four Sundays of Advent. Second, the big one, the parousia, the second coming of Christ. We also think about it during Advent as we get ready, okay? So specifically today, we are told to continue to be prepared and get ready. And how do we do that? It says it's through repentance. I don't know about you all. How many of you have ever been to a grocery store and you didn't make a list and then you go back to the house, you go this way, oh my gosh, I forgot the most important thing. It happens to me all the time. How about you? For a long, long time, I did not, I just refused to make a grocery list. I just don't do that. I just see people looking at their list. I just don't do that. But after a while, it caught up on me that each time I go, I don't like, if you ever see me at a commissary, at the grocery store, you know, just don't engage me because that's not my best place. I don't like people chatting and, you know, do, I, I have to go straight, get what I need and disappear. Okay? Because I do that, I forget sometimes the most important things. I started, I said, you know what? Maybe it's time to start making a list. I had to adjust to start making a list. That way I don't forget. The one I always do is when I'm traveling. The week before, I start making a list. That way I don't forget something very important. I don't know if you do that. I will imagine that many of you do that too. So being ready, making straight the path for God. Making sure that the day of the Lord doesn't sneak up on us like a thief. It's like making a little grocery list of what we need. And how do we do that spiritually? We can say, okay, we have two more candles to light. This is our second Sunday of Advent. I'm gonna make a I'm gonna make a spiritual list. Just like I do the grocery list. Grocery is very important, right? We all have to feed ourselves to strength, stay strong physically. We have to also stay strong spiritually. We make a little list and say, hmm, how do I make sure that that day doesn't sneak up on me? I'm going to make a list of things that I can be working on. If Christ shows up, or if it comes to the end of our lives, which will happen someday, is the guarantee. What are the top three things that I would have wished I worked on. Who in my life did I wish I forgave? Who in my life did I wish I asked for forgiveness from? What are the things that if Christ shows up without even anybody asking me, I would say, you know what? I am very guilty on this. Can we work on those in our desire, in our love of God, in our quest to come closer to God? How can we make that list and cross things off just like we do when we go to grocery store, right? We cross things off. When we are preparing to travel, we make a list. When we get them accomplished, we cross them off and then focus on the ones that we are still working on. We buy this, we get ready for this, and then whatever is left, we focus on that. How can we make that list, that grocery list, that spiritual list, and challenge ourselves, knowing that the Ten Commandments are divided into two, right? the love of God and love of neighbor. The first three commandments talk about love of God. 
the last seven talk about love of neighbor. How can we do a quick review of those commandments and Google those commandments and say, you know what, I'm good with the first three. Most people are good with the first three, really. You shall love the Lord, Lord your God with all your heart. We do. You shall worship the Lord your God. And we do. You shall not use the Lord's name in vain. Most people do, except when people get mad, they become bilingual, you know, you know what I mean? <laughs> but the last seven, a lot of people struggle with that. We all struggle with the last seven, love of neighbor. Of those seven, which one is the, at the top that we can work on? That way, when it's time for Christmas, we can readily say, you know what? We got ready. We are, when we say Merry Christmas in a couple of weeks, we can say we spiritually prepared to welcome our Lord and Savior into the world to celebrate Christmas. Anybody been to baby shower? Anybody been to baby showers? Okay. Why do people get ready? Do baby shower, prepare all that, making sure everything is good for the baby, right? The room is good, the bed is good. They have all the little things that they need. Because when that mom has that baby, she may not have the time to start going for shopping and this and that. They get ready to make sure that the, the little child has everything that is needed. People come to support. Advent is like doing a baby shower, getting ready. Advent is like making a grocery list. May God help us, give us the determination, give us the faith which we focus on today to continue to embrace the remaining six weeks of Advent. That way, we can continue to be ready. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us stand and profess our faith as could be found on the first page of our Mr. Led. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, life from light, through God from through God, begotten not made, comes and says share with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us with confidence of our prayers to God, who knows best how to take care of us. During this Advent season, may we continue to prepare the way for the Lord by looking inward in our lives as we continue to love God and our neighbor. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. As we light the second candle of Advent wreath, which signifies faith, we pray for stronger faith in God for ourselves, members of our families and friends. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to the devastation and numerous deaths 
caused by the global pandemic, repay to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We pray for wisdom and God's guidance on world leaders. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. And in the silence of our hearts, in addition to our private intentions, let us just take a moment and lift up the entire world to God to take control, especially in the United States. Let's hand the country over to God, especially with this pandemic, that God will come to our aid. We also pray for our host country here in Turkey. We now think of our special needs. We think of family and friends who need our prayers, who have requested for our prayers, and whom we need to pray for. Lord our God, bless your people gathered here in faith as we prepare for Christmas during this holy season of Advent. We pray for hope. We pray for faith. We ask you to hear the prayers we have spoken aloud and the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts. Grant us this needs through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the offer three. Next hymn is City of God, hymn number 385. Please join and sing. <laughs> Pray, my brothers and sisters in Christ, 
that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayers and offerings. And since we have no merits to plead our cause, come, we pray, to our rescue with the protection of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It reads right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. Through Christ our Lord, for all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It reads by his gift, that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so, with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. During this special moment of consecration, let us remember that lots of miracles happen. So in addition to our own private prayers for this Mass, let us continue to lift the world to God in prayer for this pandemic, for an end to this global disease. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending your spirit upon them like they do for, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and gave him thanks, broke it, gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've heard us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, Timothy, our Archbishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. rise and pray in the words our Savior taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and saved from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you say to the apostles, as you say to all of us here today, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins but on the faith of your church and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will who lives and reigns forever and ever amen the peace of the lord be with you always we turn to one another and offer the sign of god's peace Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world, Jesus, who calls us to continue to prepare. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worried that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Replenished by the food of spiritual nourishment, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that through our partaking in this mystery, you may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth and hold firm to the things of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for a second. So let me apologize, please. I will take the responsibility. I don't know how I missed that. I looked at Oxy like three times or four. I didn't understand why I was looking at him singing Silent Night during Advent. He does his best. He's not Catholic, you know that. Um, so the Protestants, they sing Christmas songs during Advent. Sometimes it can get mixed up because it plays for both, both services, okay? So I apologize for that, okay? Um, Tuesday, we have Mass because it's a holiday of obligation. The Feast of Immaculate Conception is actually the patron feast day of the, of the Americas, the United States. So we have two opportunities to do a very brief Mass, probably 25 minutes. Tari will be the max. Um, it will be in the Blessed Sacrament room whoever can show up, we have two opportunities, 11.30 and 16.30. So if you leave work a little bit early, you'll be here at 16.30 and we have mass. And then if you take a lunch break, you can also join us at 11.30. I will send emails to remind everybody. Are there any new members? Anybody new to our community? New? Okay, please keep standing. It's our tradition here to say your name, where you came from, and anything that you want to share. Please go ahead. I don't blame you, so thank you. Tell me your first name again. Crystal, thank you, thank you. Crystal, before um, you head out, please um, talk to Dana, okay? And make sure we get your email, that way you will get our parish emails, okay? Thank you, can we put our hands together for Crystal and welcome her? <laughs> Anybody leaving soon? Okay, last weekend? Okay, I know that there might be one or two people whose last weekends are coming up very soon. Thank you for your faith, and thank you for being here. On your way out, since we can't congregate that much, on your way out, we have some awesome fruits. Jesse? Where is Jesse? Okay, the strawberry is like it's from heaven, right? And the banana and all that, just grab some, say hello, on your way out. And... Don't forget, every Wednesday, all the Wednesdays of Advent, we have two opportunities to come and just do some prayers. Five minutes, 10 minutes, stop by. I blocked one hour in the morning and one hour in the afternoon. So 11 o'clock in the morning to 12 and 1600 until 1700, every Wednesday of Advent. So we do it this Wednesday and we have two more Wednesdays. Most importantly, this Tuesday, we have two masses, and I will send emails to remind everybody. Thank you, and God bless. Please stand. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The mass is ended. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Our closing hymn is Stay Awake, hymn number 59. Please join in singing.
stay awake. 